Silas himself is going to be. So I think very clearly, uh, Bangalore is is S tier. If we can just start off with with one. Yep. I think everyone's unanimous about that. She has um, the perfect kit. Bangalore, like the biggest reason is because of smoke grenades, but there's also the other things. Like smoke grenades being the best. Do, do they even have smoke grenades in Fortnite? Is that a thing? They have. They, gas they have like the gas bombs. Yeah. The early they early had stage. smokes like yeah, they season did. one, right? Yep. Okay. But like in PUBG and H one Z one, and in Blackout, yeah, smokes were crazy. Smokes are ridiculous in the competitive environment because it allows your teams to rotate. Healer S rank. I mean, we could. Yeah, I'd say Lifeline's S rank. We could talk about Lifeline as well. I think that's something that people might disagree on. I don't we're talking know. about I don't, are we talking about pubs I don't or think, comp? I don't think anything, comp. dog. We're talking about comp, but we can also like after we're done with the list, we'll go back and we'll talk about pubs. Anything, dude. Comp, I don't think Lifeline's S tier. I'll be honest. Oh, she's got a small hitbox. She has a drone that you can drop to heal. She has a package that gives you free loot while you're allowed to hold yeah, a spot, and you can RNG. use the. Every, yeah, but still, the past two days I've played Lifeline like half the scrim games and haven't gotten a single armor. Like, all right, yeah, right, that, that is a pretty big nerf. I don't know if it. Let me just like put that, all the strengths. Let me just put all the strengths real quick though. Small hitbox, able to heal yourself while fighting, faster heal because twenty five percent increase in in all things that are usable, a, a crate that gives you loot and you can use it as cover and you can block off passageways with it. There's a lot of different value points with there. It, and if your teammates are down, there's a shield that you get when you pick her up. It, it actually yeah, is. It is pretty big oh, that you can use the ultimate as a blockade late game. And people say that she sucks late game, but that ultimate, be, like creating cover for your team, can matter. I I just don't uh, see how you that, can say she's not S tier. The way that we play, if you're playing lifeline, like it doesn't matter. If you're if we knock someone and you're playing lifeline, we're still gonna jump on you, even if you're all right. Let's low, we're still gonna. Push. Let's get back to sure, lifeline. That's not that's not a, that's not a lifeline issue. Um, that's a the, he's out of position issue. All right, but that's still like some teams might. Well, play like we'll that get way. we'll get back to lifeline. First, I want to like let everyone know who you are, just so everyone in the chat knows. So the people that are talking right now is uh, at the top of the list right here is Cali. He's he plays for Liquid. Everyone that's here is signed currently signed for. For pro organizations and they're competing um next is mirko he signed for rogue and then the next two people are kurt and zerg which are signed to t1 which is how do i explain t1 the best because it's like how do, how do you explain that previously skt t1 so yeah the, so uh, the SK, number one league team in the world yeah so sk league telecom Legend. their lead team they can't they made uh it's not like another org they just like rebranded it's a merge rebranded like a merge kind of yeah so they came up with t1 which is a brand new, but is what SKT. But yeah, they're the Apex people, uh, which is Kurt and Zerg. Um, I'm going to list in the description of this video, I'm going to put links to all their Twitches if you guys want to go follow them. They stream all the time if you guys want to watch actual high rank competitive play and just, or pub stomping in general. But anyways, what, let's get back to Lifeline because Lifeline is going to be something that we probably will need to talk about more. I think clearly we could put Caustic in, at the bottom. At D tier, I wouldn't put him at the bottom. I'd say C. I'd put I say Raj C. at the bottom, but, but I'd put Kasek and okay. J. Okay, tier above S. Do you think, I, do you think Mirage is C the only one at D tier for Kasek? I, yeah. yeah, I I think Mirage is the worst character in the game by far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because like people don't get bamboozled. Even Gibraltar is <laughs> even better than. I'd even put Gibraltar at B tier. Like that's just no joke. I mean, there's. I think people. What people are gonna say is like Mirage. There are moments where you could get value out of him. Like like actually, people could get tricked. But in terms of cons consistency, like that character just sucks, really, really bad. Like his passive doesn't even work. His passive is <laughs> is bugged and is is not even good in the first place. His passive is so yeah. dog shit. Mirage is horrible. All right, so what do you guys want to talk about? Caustic? Do you think C tier? Yeah, because he has playability. Yeah. I can see it. You know, late game throwing down traps. I was... You know, you can block the bunker door with his trap. Really? So you can throw the trap inside the door and you cannot open it anymore. <laughs> oh, the wow. only way to open up the door Just is to the destroy trap. the trap. Oh, okay. Except that the trap's on the inside of the door, it locks the bunker door. That's pretty wild. So like one thing with the most recent update with season one was they talked about changing the hitboxes for Caustic and Gibraltar and Pathfinder. Because those characters, like the biggest problems with them is they're fat and they're easy to hit. But what I've noticed the last 24 hours after the update was it didn't seem like they really changed the character. They just changed the hitbox itself a little bit. 
I think that's why we're getting a lot of yeah. no rigs right now. I don't know if you guys have noticed. Have you guys? Lo I think that's. I got I a just, lot of no rigs. I think that's because I think that might servers. just be server side. You think it's so? All server side. I don't think it has to do with changes to hitbox. Okay, I wasn't sure about that. Like they, I think the hitboxes might help that though. Like it might have but, like the new hitboxes have changed it. They didn't actually change the character itself. They just changed the way that the hitbox works, right? Yeah, they I'm getting no regs on like lifeline. I don't yeah. know. Pathfinder looks sleek as fuck, dude. He looked like he lost 20 pounds of armor. You think? <laughs> I, I I think they literally trimmed off the sides of his chest and his like hips and everything. Like I wanted to see all characters become the same size, but that's just. I would rather just have everything be the same, but I mean, that would take away like a little bit of uniqueness to the game, you know, make it hard for, you know, like Gibraltar is Gibraltar. Like, how do you make him skinny? You know? so, yeah. A lot of people, I think Rainbow Six Siege would have been a good way to do it. A lot of people are talking about like adding health pools or like whatever, but I don't know. It just gets weird when you do stuff like that. I think so. You know how Rainbow Six Siege works, right? With the different characters, you have like two armor, two speed, one armor, one uh, three speed, like that kind of shit. Yeah. I think if they move that way with Apex, it actually could be really good. You can make like Gibraltar the tankiest character in the game, but he's also the slowest character in the game. Yeah, that's you true. You can make Wraith the fastest character in the game, but she is the weakest because of the fact that how fast she is. She get like three speed, one armor. You know what I mean? I think I if they went it. that direction, you could keep the different body. Uh, sizes and still allow their kits to work the way they're supposed to. Yeah, I could see it being a thing. I mean, I just prefer everything being the same size, same health pool, just because I think for competitive reasons, that's just the best. But I don't know. But anyway, so if we put Caustic at C tier, what do you guys think is, why is Caustic C tier? What's holding him back? And what what's him uh, above Mirage? His His abilities are really only good if you're on the back foot of a fight like his traps are only good if a team is pushing into you they don't really do if you already have them. the best positioning yeah you're just kind of sitting there playing for late game playing for someone to run into you or make a mistake yeah whereas like gibraltar has more offensive stuff what do you what do you think they could the what do you think they could do to caustic to maybe bump him up the list a little bit make his gas not affect teammates that, yeah, uh, make that the gas work. not affect teammates. Maybe bump the damage up on his ult, possibly. Maybe two damage, three damage. Yeah. I think it should have like a meter, right? So like, at, the longer you stay in the gas, the, it starts ticking harder. Yeah, yeah, like a ramp up. That could be good. I think uh, it's pretty... Let's, let's get through the rest of the list and we could talk about some more specifics. Um, So Gibraltar, what do you think... I guess that's some something that we could talk about a lot, but we'll get into it later. But what do you think, A tier or B tier? Clearly not S tier. B. He could possibly be C, but I, I'm thinking more towards B. Jib and uh, Bloodhound are probably B tier, I'd say. Yeah. Just kind of niche scenarios for them I, as well. I think Jib is more valuable than Blood, though. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I think I think Blood C tier. You think? She okay. So like. The only good thing about Blood is her ult, but it takes two minutes to charge, so you literally never yeah. have it. And yeah, and what's crazy is you can hear the ult, so you like oh, yeah. you know that the blood is going to be going aggro when it's popped, exactly. and you know when it's finished as well. So, like if they're trying to do like yeah. smoke plays, then you just know it's going to happen because you hear the blood ult. So you won't be playing in smokes. Yeah, I agree with this E two then because forgot that that ult is mad loud. Do you think it's like bottom end of B tier or just straight up C tier? Probably just straight up C tier. But better than Caustic. Yeah. The reason why Jib is B tier, in my opinion, is if you can get that man late game. Yeah, his ult is, is nasty, dude. Force. He is so good. Mm hmm. It just, because there, there's no counterplay to the ult other than getting inside the shield or getting inside a building. And if you're doing that, then you're losing position or you're dead. All right, so let's talk about uh, Pathfinder. I know this is something that has been like talked about a lot. So everyone thought he was like, at first everyone thought he was bad, and then everyone thought he was good, and then everyone thought he was bad in terms of like S to A tier. What do you guys think Pathfinder is at right now? I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that thought Pathfinder was really fucking good. He's probably just a, like bottom of A tier, and then Lifeline's top of A tier, possibly S tier. So like if we're I've, going, I've, I've seen the light. 
if we're going with the S tier best comp right now, not including Octane, it's what everyone's clearly been running is Bang, Wraith, and, and Lifeline. Wraith. And Lifeline right? mm -hmm. That's been the best three. Um, I know some people have been swapping out Lifeline for Pathfinder, right? And do you think do you think Pathfinder would swap out for anything else other than Lifeline, like Bang or Wraith? No, I think it's just swapping Lifeline for possibly Octane or Wraith for possibly Octane. Yeah. So if we have, so right now we have uh the the best comp where everyone's running is Bang, Lifeline, Wraith, and then next is Pathfinder, then B tier is Gib, C tier is Blood, Caustic, then last is Mirage. If we throw Octane into this equation. What do we think Octane would replace? And if he doesn't replace anything, we, where would we put him in A tier? Would he be better he than Pathfinder? He would be in A tier, replacing the Pathfinder or the Wraith. Yeah, I, I actually like that a lot. Because, like, you know, Wraith is used because Wraith is nuts already, but you also have the mobility from the, uh, from the portal for team plays. So, my, my thought on Octane is he plays a lot like Bangalore in the sense that he's a strong skirmisher. He has the movement speed and he's able to do a lot of flanks, a lot of like fast play mm -hmm. potential. And so in my opinion, he should be A tier and he's kind of right now being swapped out, at least with my team. Um, we've been working with Bangalore and having the Bangalore player also playing Octane and it's up to him whether he wants to play either one of those, depending on if we want to have like a heavy rotate team or if we want to emphasize high ground. So you're, you've been hard locking Lifeline and Wraith and then swapping. I in. think Lifeline's a must pick right now. And we've been playing, um, at least today, we tried out Octane, Lifeline, and Pathfinder, which seemed to be pretty damn good. One of the things I like about Lifeline is it adds, like the character has just so many value points that it just adds consistency to the whole squad. Just because there's so many different reasons why Lifeline is good. But then there's a lot of people that think that Lifeline doesn't even deserve to be you know, the most picked. Like they're all leaning towards like Octane. I, I saw a lot of scrim squads yesterday running uh, Bangalore, Wraith, and, and Octane. But I don't know if it's just because they just wanted to run Octane or if they actually thought that Octane was just straight up better than Lifeline. Everyone just, everyone just w people are, we We were running that comp and it, it works pretty well because if you get a knock, the the amount of it's pressure really you aggro. just put on someone. Yeah. You, yeah, you have every utility to just run and roll over a team like fast enough before you get W. It's kind of like every character has crazy survivability too. Like Lifeline kind of lacks yeah. that a little bit because Lifeline lacks mobility. So your positioning has to be nuts. And you have to play around your Lifeline a little bit. Whereas yeah, if you... you can't play as aggro with a Lifeline, yeah. but the Lifeline like can play just kind of chilling. Kind of... I really don't think that Bangalore can be swapped out. I thought about it, but I don't think Bangalore... I think Bangalore is like actually the best character in the game in in terms of yeah the, the smokes are very strong and our ult is really good after you wipe a team you throw the ult if you're worried about getting possibly third partied and the speed boost is just it. everything about that character yeah. is just ridiculous i don't know if if you could really swap anything out and then you talk about like so if you're keeping bangalore then you can either replace lifeline or wraith if you replace lifeline then your your team just becomes like a really offensive you know all the characters have good self survivability but like i don't know it's interesting because it, it looks like a pretty good comp but it's just a difference in play style you think right yeah all right i feel the, the, the problem with octane uh wraith and bangalore is I think as of right now, because everyone's kind of, at least in scrim wise, everyone's playing really puggy and it's kind of just the W key yeah. best, essentially, that that really caters to the play style of what's being played now. But once customs roll out and the, the pace is definitely slowed down yeah. and you're not able to W key like that, like most teams, most pro teams, if they see a team W king them, you're not going to live. You're, you're yeah. going to have your armor taken I off. Agree. You're going to be absolutely destroyed. I agree. It also things will change a lot in customs with like playstyle and and also number of teams. Yeah. Like because we don't really know how many number of teams they're gonna want in the custom lobby. It could be less. Could be less than it'll that. be twenty. Twenty. It probably will be twenty. But yeah. you want to keep you want to keep the yeah. competitive scene as close to the public scene as you possibly can, so that people can relate. Yeah. 
Something that was changed with Lifeline that a lot of people probably don't know is that you used to be able to get gold items out of the care packages, but you can't anymore. So abusing like care packages for upgrading loot is a lot less than it was before, even though you still can, but you don't, you don't have that small chance of getting a gold armor or a gold helm. But I don't think that nerf was that big. I th the chance was tiny anyway. I think it was pretty yeah. big because it's just like a whole different, different category of upgrading armor. Even though it's a small chance, but it was, a, you know, it was there. Like, it did happen. You did get armors, gold armor and gold helm. I guess it wasn't crazy. Gold but... armor in the sense of competitive is pretty useless. Yeah, but it's like adding an extra percent chance to get an epic armor. So... I mean, it might also be a roll where you roll an armor and then it rolled either that armor and then oh, yeah, it could be purple or gold. It yeah. might not be like two separate rolls. Yeah. All right, so I think there's like it's pretty unanimous that Pathfinder just can't be S tier. I don't think even in the customs. What do you guys think in customs when customs come out? Do you think Pathfinder could find its way in S tier? That hitbox is just fucking uh, ridiculously big. He could he could find his way in there if the the amount of end game zones changes. Yeah, do you think so? so some... Right now the zones are very predictable, and you can kind of it's you pretty can, much yeah. a fifty fifty for like after first zone yeah i agree something would have to change for pathfinder to be to make his way in he's just too big dude just, he's his hitbox is actually really really nice right now yeah he's, he's like he's while really grappling it's really hard to hit yeah but the passive lacks because you just know where the zones are gonna end mm -hmm. that's true i think i think even with knowing where the zones are gonna end like the play style of moving from beacon to beacon like seems to work so well because there's not that maybe that's just because there's not that many pathfinder players right now yeah but like the way we were playing today dude we literally went from beacon to beacon getting to the next zone and shit was just so like fluid it was awesome you do have it, to it was insane that is a good point to, you like, have to go ahead you have to get lucky with the beacon spots though even though they added two more like possible positions for beacons there were games that i played lifeline or uh, pathfinder and all the beacons were on one side of the and we yeah, couldn't true. like hit any of them but yeah that's good to good to point out though because like if pathfinder becomes like guaranteed s tier everyone's playing him then every beacon is just gonna get used you can you can double use a a beacon. Oh, can you actually? So, I mean, oh, you can. Yeah. Okay, so, okay. so I mean, as a team, like, if you want to hold down a beacon spot, you can reuse it later. Okay. Well, you can use the same beacon, but if someone else uses a beacon, then you can't use. I'm pretty sure you can't. I, you I don't can, know if you everyone can... can use the same beacon, and you can use the same beacon uh, as many times as you want. Oh well, there it is. What? I actually didn't realize that. Yeah. I put. That's I put, why like... Pathfinder is fucking nuts. Okay. Okay. Things have changed. I didn't realize that. I haven't put yeah. I haven't put a lot of time into Pathfinder. I know Greg we, Grego has, but we haven't really we scrimmed with them for like one week, and then we we uh, went back to Lifeline. We literally like every single scrim we went to like second to last circle, and we because we had the green circle right, so we know exactly where it's at, and we literally just got optimal position every single time, and we yeah. had high ground, and we just destroyed everybody. I think we had two different scrims where we had twenty plus kills, and we weren't even like pushing for kills. Yeah, it's just because our positioning was so insane because of Pathfinder. That we literally just shot everybody rotating in, and we just got so many kills. It was insane. Yep. All right. So just to conclude everything, pretty clearly, it's still the same, same comp meta as Bang, Lifeline, Wraith. But if you do swap in Octane, uh, you were saying Mirko that you actually did it for Bang. You guys were testing swapping out Bang. I think the playstyles match up. Yeah. So your Bangalore player should be your Octane player. I think any any good Bangalore player right now should be playing Octane. I was I was actually thinking about playing Octane a lot, but I haven't. We didn't even scrim today. Yeah, I don't know. It just it depends on the team, I guess. A lot of people are saying that they they've been trying out swapping out Wraith, and then some people are just swapping out Lifeline just to make an aggro pub style comp. But I think this is all going to change depending on like customs and and all that. It's all about your team dynamic. All right. So if we talk about let's compare this list to. Just the casual players. Let's just say like Timmy and Jimmy queuing up ranked and they want to work well together in a public environment. What do you guys think that they should lean towards? Do you think they should lean towards the Bang Lifeline Wraith? Or do you think they should use Octane? Or do you think Octane's a really high skill cap character that people should lean are away they, from him? Are they trying for wins in public matches or high kills? Let's just say like, you know, they're going for wins, but they're not camping. They're actually 
taking team fights. They're just not holding W all the time. You know, they're getting like, let's say like 12 kill squad wins or something like that. Like just the average player looking to get some kills, get some wins. Definitely bang still. I think Octane. Maybe throw in. I'd probably do Octane Bang Wraith, honestly, for a casual pub squad where everybody needs so? to play for themselves. Yeah, that's true. Most teams don't have the level of teamwork where they can like actually use the, the abilities line. of the heroes like together. Yeah. To a point where it actually matters. So I think individual skill matters a lot more in pubs. So you need the the heroes that can complement that. Yeah. You think Octane is actually a pretty hard character for like the average player to really play well off of? No. I don't think he's hard to master, but there definitely is uh Sometimes when people might overuse his Q ability yeah. and just keep losing HP without noticing. From what I yeah, what I noticed one thing. From what I noticed from new players is that they play really slow. Like so like wrapping their head around Octane might be a little difficult. And they might just go too aggressive or just, you know. They might just yeah, I think that's why top. Octane would be good though, because you wouldn't be spamming Q like a new player wouldn't be or like a casual player that maybe doesn't grasp fully the Yeah like how to use their abilities, won't spam that Q to the point where the life is low. And they don't take fights as much, so like when they do take a fight, maybe they pop it yeah. to get that extra speed boost, and that might be enough to win them that fight. I think Octane would be great for new players to, to learn and play, because it just will force them to play more faster, you know, like more you know, fast-paced and aggressive and stuff. And it'll just help them become better quicker. I think Wraith kind of has that a little bit too, because you can if you get into a bad spot, you can just shift out. Yeah, I guess that pretty much covers everything with the, the character tier list. Uh, do you guys have any like other things that you might throw in there? Like cheese comps or, I don't know, something random? Because I know some people were trying out Gib. There actually is, like, Triv is a Gib main, right? That's the only person I he's know. He's been playing it a lot, yeah. Today he played it every he, game. He's the man you want to talk to about Jib. He's, like, the the forefront of trying to keep that man in the meta. <laughs> he's he's yeah. the only one I know of that plays him still. I start out the game playing Jib. He loves him. I I have a lot of respect for Jib and Triv running Jib, but I don't know, man. That dude's just too slow, too big. I can't do it. You have to play a lot smarter and yeah. maybe more passive, but it just I don't play Jib, so I wouldn't know. But I can assume you make it to late game, you have your ult still, and you throw an ult and you maybe kill three teams at once. It could be like what if you replaced your lifeline with Jib and your bang with Octane? So it gives your jib two separate mobility. Like if you can teleport him around and you, and you can bounce pad him around. Like that's actually something that you could consider. It could work, but as far as loot is right now, you would need more loot. Because if you don't get a lot of loot off the start, you're kind of yeah trying to hide from being poked. And if your jib is just running around trying to rotate from spot to spot, he'll get shot at for sure. Mm -hmm. And he'll have to use all his it's meds. pretty easy to shoot people off the bounce pad too. That's something I learned like right away when the character got released. I kept trying to use bounce pad to get away from squads and it just got me killed because it was easy to shoot him get me out of this guy. Alright, cool. So that's the Apex Legends tier list. I know there's another legend coming out soon. I don't know if there's any leaks about it. Um I don't know his name is Watson, but have you guys seen any like ability leaks or anything? I have not. I wonder if it's going to be a not. mobility character. I hope so. Because right now, all the best you never characters. Have enough mobility. Yeah, all the best characters are high mobility or. I think it's going to be a box. tank. Another big one? I mean, next, next character Makes is going to be a tank. They, they already have. Like they have two. They have two. No, they have three characters that are already mobility. They have one real support. They have like. Two like fast rotator kind of things, I guess you could say with Wraith and Pathfinder, like they're kind of a mix. You know what I mean? Like they don't really have other than Gibraltar. Like yeah. it's just it's either a support or a tank, I feel like is in the works. I have a feeling he's not gonna be a competitive character. He'll probably just be a fun character for, for pubs. But I could be wrong. We'll see. You never know. Most yeah. companies like to release a character that's super fucking broken. Yeah. You get a bunch of money from selling skins and then you end up nerfing them a bit. That's yeah. that's usually how most companies operate. Pretty much. Alright, so we pretty much covered everything. Uh...